Hello viewers, Super GT here. I'm finally back on Gran Turismo because I've been tempted by Group 3 at the Nurburgring. Probably my favourite combination in the entire game. So let's have a look at the leaderboards. 51785 at the top there and the M6, interestingly enough, because it's the car I chose for my manufacturer season. We're going to go with it. Try and set a quick lap here just before we jump into the race. The race being one of the greatest I've had in a, in a fair while. And it shows why Gran Turismo is probably my favourite sim. I say probably, well it is. Okay, so first lap here. Just trying to get a rough benchmark of where we are. 54.3, so just a, just about two and a half seconds off. We do go quicker though, in the second and the third lap. Before we attempt to try to really just get into the 52s. Ideally, I want to be within a second of the number one. Which would mean I'm aiming for a 52.7. So I need to go about half a second quicker here. Let's see if we can do that. In the first uh, sector here, the Nürburgring. As I say, great circuit this. Absolutely love it. Been around here a fair few times. At least 200 times. If not, many more. Quarter of a second up in the first split. We actually lose time in the second sector. Not too much though, thankfully. And then this corner here, this long right-hander, it's a crucial corner as it leads onto a very long straight. I see the split time. We gain two tenths in that sector, sector three. So we are up by about four tenths here, coming into the final chicane, which is make or break on the lap. Absolutely abusing the track limits. Just keep a pixel on the curb, basically. And you're all right. Into the final turn. And driving out to the outside, make the most of the runoff on the exit short drive to the finish line 53-0 okay not too bad not too bad at all I have to take that now a couple of laps later we've pushed the limits a little bit too much it's worth a try though it's worth a gamble we get a penalty at which point we rage quit into the wall enough of the qualifying let's jump into the race and let me tell you this race was absolutely amazing and it kind of shows you just how good this game can be Here's the requirement. Seven times tyre wear. You have to use the medium and the soft for this one. Ten laps of the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. Let's do it. Second on the grid. Up behind the Peugeot. Driven by the Czech driver. Behind us we have a Polish driver in the Lexus. The lights are out. They weren't even on really. Actually no, the green lights are still on. Let's go. Beginning of the race. Can we possibly go for a huge lunge into turn one on lap one? Well, you... There's always that chance, isn't there? But we're not going to do it. Not on cold tyres. Let's just ease into this race. This is my first race. This is my first daily race in a couple of weeks. And given how good this race is, it really highlights the the main upside, I think, of Gran Turismo, which is really that you can just jump on, not really have to practice a huge amount, and you, you can just have a very good race. You can have a very good race with a couple of other people in different cars. And this is one of the main reasons why I do love this game. It's pure accessibility. Okay, can you pay me now, Sony? That was a good advert, wasn't it? That was a good advert. Right. Driving down the hill towards the hairpin. First lap here, just easing into the race nicely. Just gauging where we're at. Uh, the, the check driver ahead did set a lap time a couple of tenths quicker. 51.7. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was a 52-7. And therefore, you know, he should be quicker. He's on pole position. But we'll see if we can just keep in the toe, keep in the slipstream, and then potentially go for a move a little bit later on. So winding out onto the back straight at the end of the first lap. Lexus still there. Going forth, just dropping back, possibly on medium tyres. We started on the soft tyres. Uh, so we don't know who's on what tyre. I'm guessing the top three of us here are all on the soft. Now, through the chicane, that looked awfully like I cut it, and it, I indeed I did. A 1.5 second penalty. And that seemed rather harsh, but I did cut it, so I have to contend with that. I have to deal with it. So that's a frustrating start. It's a long race, though. About 20 minutes. Just shy of two minutes to lap here. So let's uh, not worry about it too much. Just try and get as close as we possibly can to the back of the Peugeot. If not, try and get ahead of him before I serve the penalty. 
and then we'll try and claw our way back once we have served it. So let's try and just get a nice first sector here and uh, through this technical section. Just try to keep it pinned to the left and then you can really open up this right hand of turn four, really making the most of the exit runoff. The Lexus just perhaps beginning to drop away, but he will get past me in two corners time once I've served this penalty. The Peugeot up in front, really good. Actually, very good handling car. Perhaps lacking on the straight. There aren't too many really long straights here at the Nürburgring. So there's the serving of the penalty. We drop down, of course, down into third. Uh, let's have a look at the gap as we come out of the hairpin here. 1.4? Yeah, or 1.3. Let's just call it 1.3. So we've dropped outside the slipstream range. 2.2 away from the leader. And judging by that first lap and a half this is going to be a very close race none of us seem to be really able to pull away from the other so this is one of those races it comes about every now and then where it's very much a stalemate and every tenth matters you have to be very consistent in a race like this and that's good you know it's a good 20 minute test 10 minute race of consistency and not bottling it of which is oh, i mean it's one of my specialities a lot of the time Okay, through the chicane, we've gained slightly on the leader, 2.1 the gap, 1.2 to second. So we've just gained a little bit. I think the BMW good in the final sector here at the Nürburgring. Uh, we are pulling away from the guy in fourth, perhaps on the medium tyres. So we might have to watch out for him coming back in the second half of the race when they bolt on the softs and us guys up here go on to the mediums. I don't know at this point the lap, best lap to go in as I haven't done the race yet. But we will find that out. It might be a case of just copying what the guys in front do and just mirroring or copying their strategy. Through turn three, into turn four, gap to the lead, 2.2. So it's very much stalemate. It's hovering at that gap, just over two seconds. Am I gaining on second? I would say so. Gap to just under a second now. It looks like he goes very wide through uh, turn six so yes uh, just uh, getting into slipstream range in fact as we head down the hill into the braking zone just go in nice and narrow off the power coast it a little bit and then back on the power on the exit of the corner up into the Schumacher S dipping two wheels onto the right you can take this flat slight comfort lift there though of course as the tyres wear out it is going to become increasingly difficult to take that flat if not impossible and then you've got the left right section here and it's this right hand as we've said very important to get this one right good exit there make the most of the the, uh, the exit runoff as we've said many times maximize the track width okay very much into the slipstream range now not close enough to go for dive bomb of the century well it could have been but we're not going to do a stupid move and lose a lot of time to the leader who in fact has a penalty 0.5 seconds so I don't know why my one was so bad. I've got a 1.5, but there you go. That's good news. The leader is going to drop back into our grasp somewhat. Polish driver here in the Lexus. Just uh, swerving right to try to break the toe. Follow him across. Not close enough to go for this move. Really just anticipating the penalty of the Peugeot. So let's just try to pull up towards the back of him a little bit. And then see where we're at once we serve that penalty. 0.4 behind uh, the Polish driver here. 2.2 behind the leader. So that gap really has been very constant at just over two seconds. Through turn four on the exit. Big mistake there from the Polish driver. Doesn't lose too much time though. So, well, maybe it wasn't a big mistake. Just looked very, very dodgy. But actually didn't lose him too much time ultimately. Perhaps just wore his, uh, his tyres out. Okay, down the hill then. Gap there, 2.3. And then let's see what it is on the exit of this uh, hairpin once uh, we've settled back in. So 2.3, now 1.8, 1.7. So gain half a second. So actually that half a second penalty actually losing him about half a second. And um, it depends on obviously where the penalty line is. Some tracks you'll lose more than half a second for a half second penalty. Some you'll lose less depends where it all is now 
1.8 seconds behind the lead. Coming up towards halfway to the race. And I'm not sure at this point when to pit. We are... We do have the benefit of being behind, which is, which means we can just copy their strategy. When you're in the lead, sometimes, you know, the guy behind can just do something different to you. There's not much you can do about it. Up into the final corner. Neither of them pitting, so we're going to continue here. You can see just how close this is. Top three here separated by one and a half seconds. Very, very close indeed. As we cross the line to end lap number four. Pretty much on the pace. The fastest lap is 54.906. My fastest lap is 54.948. So our fastest laps within half a second of each other. And I presume that the, the Lexus here has a very similar fastest lap. So it's a very, very close race this. And it's one of these races. I've had many of these. They do come up every now and then. You know, a lot of races come down to sort of tyre wear and strategy. And they can be very different. But this one... It's one of those races where you just have to be very consistent for 10 laps. Every 10th matters. And it's interesting because we have to drive both sets of tyres, soft and medium. And then, of course, throughout the stint, the tyre is going to wear out quite a lot with high tyre wear. And it's going to feel very different. Down the hill, then. Are we going to see some pit stops at the end of this, uh, at the end of this lap? The fifth lap, halfway into the race at the end of this lap. We are certainly edging towards that Peugeot. The gap is 1.3, and I imagine that the, uh, that the Lexus is just going to start beginning to pick up slipstream, which in turn would help me slightly. Into turn number 10, I think. I'm just making up numbers. And then if that was 10, then this is 11, given how numbers work. Okay, not a good exit there. The Lexus is actually really good off that turn. And he is definitely in the slipstream. That gap is now coming down to 1.1 to the leader. And actually that causes a big mistake here for the Lexus. As he gets caught out perhaps by having to... Should have broken earlier. Braked earlier. Broken earlier. Braked earlier. And we go up his inside on the exit. He goes way too deep into the chicane. And it's a free position. We're going to get back that free position. So back into second at a really good time. Just before the pit stop. So slightly longer pit stops here. We're going to fast forward it slightly as we as we go in and hopefully do a pit stop quicker than Valtteri Bottas. And indeed it was. So we, we retain second, which is actually fourth because two people have gone through who haven't pitted yet. So we can effectively say we're in second at this point in the race. Once the top two do go in, they will have to go in. Otherwise they get a penalty. And, um, okay, that was good. That was a good end to that lap. Uh, lap five. Polish driver just making a mistake at the chicane. Easy to do. Just overcook it slightly. And we're back into second. The gap to the lead, 1.1. There is second place. Could he throw a spanner into the works? Hopefully not. We'll see. Well, hopefully he could impede the guy in, in just in front of me here. But we are maybe two, three seconds away from that car. And therefore, we would presume that that Turkish driver in the BMW will go into the pit lane, as will the German in the lead. So they probably won't become a factor. We do just need to catch up on pure pace. I'm still a quarter of a second away from the slipstream range. Uh, the almighty suction zone is not quite being reached. 0 0.9 behind now. Just two more tenths. Just two tenths that I need to gain, and I'm in. Of course, we do, not, we do have to consider that the Polish driver behind is very close as well. Uh, we do get a good exit here, though. 0 0.8 behind, not quite in the slipstream. Just a little bit more we need. Is that driver going to pit? Let's look at the German up in the lead. And then we've got the Turkish driver in second. As we go through the chicane, let's have a look. The German goes in. He pulls off to the right-hand side. The Turkish driver does not. He stays out. Okay, this is very interesting. So we are going to catch up with this guy on this lap. And this could very much change the complexion of the race. There it is. First place, Turkish driver. He's on very, very worn tyres at this point. Seventh lap on the same set. And I was struggling on the fifth lap. And it's the same car. So we're going to have to watch this one closely. How uh, the, the Peugeot there, the Czech driver, manages to contend with this slow BMW. 
I mean, ideally, it slows them right up and I can catch up. But we'll see how it goes. Through turn four on the exit. The BMW struggling there for grip, traction on the exit. And therefore, um, just really beginning to slow down of the Peugeot. And again, slow line taken there. I'm definitely gaining at this point. But they're going to get an overlap here. So the Czech driver is going to get up the inside and is not going to lose too much time. The gap is down to 0.6. And I'm going to have to really make the most of this. It goes very wide. I'm going to stick my nose up the inside. And see if we can get a better traction here on the exit. Just tuck into the toe of the Peugeot. And thankfully, I've got through. Probably didn't lose too much time there. And I would say the Peugeot probably lost more time. The gap down to 0.7. I'm in the slipstream. So that just shows you the tiny things matter. I'd say this guy ahead lost maybe a tenth or two. But that's all I needed to get back into the, into the slipstream. And uh, we can take a look there. There it is. 0.7. We're in. Let's go. Let's try and catch up. He moves to the right very early through the kink. Definitely conscious of my presence. My ever closer presence now. Through the chicane. Make sure we don't get a penalty. We've already done that mistake. We don't want to do it again. Into the final corner. End of lap 7. Three to go. Is the Peugeot on the back foot? Can we just in to reel him in the polish driver behind 1.3 seconds behind must have made some sort of mistake and uh, you see it there as we look behind not so much of a factor right now although if we start fighting a little bit too much here then it will very quickly come back into this race you can lose a second very quickly by by fighting through the first sector nowhere near close enough to go for a move here so we just have to take this as well as possible the best places to go for the moves on this lap at the very beginning through into uh, turn one or at the very end into the chicane i mean you can take overtake anywhere as long as you're you know close enough i'm definitely not close enough here but it's gonna be one of those races as i've said because it's so close you do have to tend to go for the moves at the the big obvious places it's going to be very difficult to do it otherwise and therefore we do need to get a good second half of this lap um so i'd say after the hairpin going up the hill through the Schumacher S and then you've got the next chicane after that so you need to get a good run from here for the next sort of 20 seconds and then we have a chance into the final chicane that's basically what we're aiming at here a couple of lifts through the Schumacher S not ideal and uh, the pressure just begins to edge away slightly gap to 0 0.6 and uh, not the tidiest section we wanted to get this good but we didn't get good on the exit driving a good line there on the power nice and early gap coming down very quickly to half a second less than half a second we are definitely gaining not close enough to go for this move so we're just going to break slightly before the 100 board don't make the mistake that the polish driver made by just overcooking it in the slipstream up to the final corner you can see this is about as close as we have been in the entirety of the race uh, certainly the second stint exit of the final corner lap number eight two to go as we cross the line here to begin the ninth lap you see he's very conscious now that i'm very close could we go for this move potentially that probably had about a 10 percent chance of success so we're going to wait you see he compromised himself slightly by going slightly narrow into the into the first corner so we're getting very very close now less than 0.3 seconds behind this race is very much on very much on with one and three quarter laps left to go. The next of turn four, keep it nice and pinned. Correct the oversteer on the way out. Up towards turn five, just gets quite tricky to spot your braking zones when the car is this close in front. We're just about getting it right. Dropping down through turn six and then of course making the most of all of the runoff on the exit. I felt like I was close into this corner. I was fairly good just using the extra tarmac on the left. And then we get very, very close indeed. That's about as close as I have been all day. He squirms slightly on the exit. Let's try and get Schumacher S correct. Quite tricky to do in the slipstream. This close behind. Make the most of the curbs. And we're very, very close indeed. Is he going to defend? Yes. That move would have been very difficult to get dead right. It's one of those ones where you really do have to be sure. Because if you make this move and get it wrong, then that's pretty much it. You've you've shot your bolt and you, you probably won't get another opportunity 
I'll be close enough here. He does get really good traction off of that final corner there for this long straight. Not close enough to go for the move. We're going to save ourselves and just wait for the opportune moment. We can't send in a stupid move with a very low percentage chance of it actually working. So we just have to be nice and patient here. Get good traction. Not quite as good as him. He gets very good launch off the corner. The Peugeot very planted indeed. And are we close enough here? Maybe not. Guy behind getting a penalty. We don't have to worry about the guy in third anymore. It really is a two-horse race here at the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. Dropping down through the first corner. Final lap then. Lap 10 of 10. It's been a brilliant race so far. I'm pleased that I've managed to recover from that early setback with a penalty to get back to fighting for an opportunity to win the race. Through turn four, Peugeot again, very planted. And in hindsight here, I might have changed my brake bias a little bit towards the front because I'm struggling more for rear grip on the exit of the corners than I am the turning grip on the way in. You see there, the car sliding ominously through turn five and on the exit of six. Down towards the hairpin. The gap has opened up back to 0.6. I'm relying on a mistake now, I think. Just take it nice and narrow. Perhaps go a little bit deep on the way in. You can see the car really struggling now. I'm just hoping that he struggles as well. We're in the same boat. Although his boat is branded as a Peugeot. Mine's branded as a BMW. So we're not really in the same boat at all, are we? Coming up in towards turn number 10, I think. And then... This corner here is going to have to be good. Oh my goodness. Massive moment. Having to correct that. That could have easily ended in tears. The gap opens up. Look at that. 0 0.7. Ah, I'm not close enough to go for this. Unless it is not even dive bomb of the millennium. Dive bomb of just the history of Earth. And there won't be a better one if I were to pull that one off. But we are too far back. The car struggling for grip on this final lap. Through the final corner, it's going to have to be a second. I wish I could have just been a little bit closer, maybe a little bit braver and just sent one up the inside and gone for a move. But sometimes you just have to be very careful and just, you know, it, it may well have ended in tears and we could have both been out of the race. So we're going to bring home a second. And to be honest, I don't even, I don't even care because it was such a good race. It was such a good race. And as I alluded to earlier, the fact that I can just jump onto Gran Turismo after a couple of weeks away and just have such an amazing race straight away like that. That shows you why Gran Turismo is so good. So good. You can just have a great race like that. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, of course, that you've stuck around to the end. In the meantime, take care. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.